Uh, speakers that will talk about the executive order, the legal ramifications, the do's and don'ts. First up, we have attorney Thomas Durkin from Durkin and Roberts. So please take it away. all of my Arabic and you'll have to excuse my south side Irish Catholic accent. <laughs> I'm sure it doesn't do justice to anything. We have a first grade um, class in Arabic. <laughs> but that's only fitting because there's not a lot of justice left uh, in this country right now. Um, this is about my third time here, and I feel like I'm a broken record, although the difference today is that the size of the crowd, and, and I'm incredibly encouraged by that. Um, years ago, when we first started fighting the war on terror and the discrimination against Islam that is implicit in that, um, we repeatedly said people had to come out, people had to organize, Islam, uh, American Muslims had to identify and get out with everyone else. And I'm delighted to hear the, the chant that Dr. just said. Um, I hope that includes the Irish as well. I hope <laughs> the Irish and the Catholics. Uh, <laughs> To the extent the Catholic Church has not stood by you enough, um, I will call on them to do so once again, uh, and at least we think we have a Pope now who's going to lead that charge. But uh, the simple fact of the matter is, is we're in big trouble. Well, we're in a lot bigger trouble than we think. Um, in, insofar as the order, the executive order involving the immigration, Everything will hinge to, on, the, on a court decision tomorrow in San Francisco in the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. It is, it, that's the Court of Appeals for the Western States. It is involving the decision from the Washington Federal Court. It's in a case captioned, Wash, State of Washington versus Donald Trump and others. And it's on an appeal from the United States District Court from the Western District of Washington. This is the appeal that was issued, the, the order that was entered by Judge uh, Robards, I believe is his name, I may not be pronouncing that correctly, which has imposed a, a, a national stay on the executive order or a ban on any enforcement of it, which the Department of Homeland Security and the State Department have gone along with and have suspended any enforcement of the order. Um, but. I'm here to tell you, um, I think if you have any relatives that are overseas, get them on planes now as quickly as they can because uh, this, I'm not sure that this order is what this order by Judge Robarts is gonna last very long. Um, and the simple reason for that is, is that we have abandoned in this country any judicial or congressional review of matters involving national security. And if you read this brief, I have a copy of it, I can leave it here if you want to copy it for people. But the simple fact of the matter is, just like we've been arguing in all the criminal cases on the war on terror, particularly United States versus Adel Dayoud, which has already gone to the Seventh Circuit, we have, both Congress and the judiciary has deferred all matters of national security to the executive branch or the president himself. And I, I guess everybody thought that was okay as long as we liked who the president was, particularly those of us who like President Obama. But the fact of the matter is, is that the national security state has grown exponentially <coughs> from 9-11, started well before 9-11. This is no secret. This is one of those secrets that is out in plain sight. It's been happening since 1947 with the establishment of the National Security Act by Harry Truman. This is no accident. We, we have a huge national security state now that is oppressive and has essentially 
given all power to the executive, which is why we have criminal cases in the federal court now that simply cannot be reviewed. That's why we now have secret evidence in federal courts and so forth, and I could go on for hours, but nobody wants to hear that. Um, but what's going to come back to haunt us, and I mean all of us here who want um, some degree of civil liberties in this country, we cannot continue to have unfettered discretion in the executive when the executive declares this is a matter of national security. And that's exactly what's happening here. The first, uh, in, in the first paragraph of the brief, they, the, 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 the line that's most powerful is that this order second guesses the president's <coughs> national security judgment about the quantum of risk posed by admission of certain classes of aliens and the best, mean, and best means of minimizing that risk which effectively means Muslims from those countries simply cannot be trusted, um, which is absurd, of course. Um, I think we were very fortunate last week to have some success with Dr. Alhamzi. Um, he, he was the uh, doctor from um, Christ. The, the Christ Hospital, the UIC. Um, we were able to file a lawsuit uh, challenging that. Um, and fortunately, as I've said in the press since then, the government attorneys uh, were quick to see that this was a situation that, that needed an exception. I'm not so sure how many of the, more of those exceptions are going to be granted, uh, because I, I, I'm going to predict that this order will not, this, the order by the judge in Seattle will not last. It's not very but, uh, <laughs> I hope it does. If it does, then maybe uh, we can do something. I think the only hope we have, and somebody said you know, that we're going to become white, um, there's a fantastic book by an author by the name of Ignatia called How the Irish Became White. Um, I'm happy to report that my people were thought to be black as well. Uh, history has a way of repeating itself in this country. Um, but. I think the real message has to be that the Democratic Party has to be put on notice, including Senator Durbin, who's been kind enough to come, but they have to be put on notice that there has to be opposition, that the Democratic Party cannot any longer pretend that it's the Republican Party on the, the Republican Party life. Not a time for a third party. This is a time to tell the only party that will at least profess to stand up for civil liberties in this country and for the poor and the working class, which they've completely abandoned, is the Democrats. And I'm, I'm not, I, I don't get usually involved in, in partisan politics, but that's the only message I can give today. If we don't have an opposition party in this country, we are going to be we will not have a democracy if we have one at all now. We will not have a rule of law. That assumes we even have a rule of law today. There are too many exceptions to the rule of law. It's called the state of exception. It's all based on the state of emergency, and that's what's happening. We are about to have a state of emergency imposed on us by this lunatic in the White House. And that's what's going to happen if we don't have an opposition party in Congress. And I'll leave you with this. There is a tremendous article in, in this week's uh, London Review of Books. Uh, it's, and I have copies here. I can leave to have copies as well. It's called Act One, Scene One by Professor David Bromwich of Yale, B-R-O-M-W-I-C-H. I recommend it to everyone because he hits it exactly on the head as to how we got where we are and the only way that we can get out of it will be with an opposition party. Um, and I'll leave you with that, with one word. Opposition means to resist, and that means get out in the street. There is a, a national march of lawyers on uh, uh, February 17th. I think it's at 12 or 1 o'clock. I would ask that every lawyer in the United States participate in it. Um, I think I would ask that the next time there's a women's march, everybody here be out on the street with us as well. That's the only way that these people will listen if, if they can listen at all. Thank you.
Thank you, Mr. Durkin. Now we will have Sister Maria Muzaffar from CARE Chicago.